Hey guys, what's up? By Zach Detron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is on an attack strategy. I don't think I've formally made a video on this strategy, so I wanted to make sure I did that, uh, even though it's been covered on the channel in war recaps and all that stuff. So you guys have probably seen it a little bit already, uh, but this is the HBVP uh, attack. I'm not sure if that's the correct acronym, uh, but that's just what I call it, basically. You have the uh, Healer, Bowler, Valk Pekka, then typically just four rages straight up and whatever it takes to do funneling and that's it. So in this video we're going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of what your army composition looks like, how the uh, deployment goes, what types of bases, all that good stuff, just the basic stuff uh, for the attack strategy. Um, and then we'll take a look at two attacks and or two successful attacks in one failed attack. So let's just get right into them and we can kind of just talk our way through as the attacks go. I don't want to, you know, spend a few minutes lecturing without showing any actual attacks. So this one is starting off with Sub-Zero. Uh, first thing you want to do, which Sub-Zero does, is do a little bit of a mini queen walk. Um, it's a great way to get some good value. Uh, the main thing to keep in mind is that you typically are bringing a number of healers anyway, so you might as well do a queen walk. It's really no cost because uh, the healer is still up, the queen is still up, hopefully, at the end of the queen walk. It can just be a short one. You don't have to invest any spells or anything if you don't want to. Sometimes you'll, you'll use one rage, but it also is, it does a great job creating the funnel uh, for your entry uh, because you're sending so much stuff into the base at one point. This is pretty much at an attack where all your troops enter the base at the same place and uh, because of that um, it's very important that the funnel is created nicely because if one thing doesn't go into the base then everything won't so anyway he came in at the bottom here I think I might have missed that a little bit but anyway came in at the bottom and uh, that nice little dead zone space really helped uh, keep everything going into the base the only side that was kind of sketchy was the uh, top left which he did a great job with this queen on the queen walk uh, because of that there's nowhere for his troops to go but inside the base and at that point you're just dropping those rages down on everything you have your heroes you have valks you have bowlers you have pekkas and uh, they're just making their way through the base uh, one thing to keep in mind you drop those rages on your actual troops um, the non-healer troops the actual frontline troops then uh, as your troops move through the healers will eventually step up and get the benefit of the rage so you get the full I don't know 50 maybe less than that, maybe 10 second duration of the rage. I think it might last like 10 seconds or something. I'm not sure. Uh, he kind of missed that last rage, didn't quite hit, but uh, do, didn't really need it. His troops do go to the outside of the base, which will happen because you don't have any jump spells, uh, but that's okay. As long as you take out the you know the core of the base, that important stuff, uh, most of the defenses will be around the outside, so your bowlers, your queen can kind of snipe them as they go, and uh, as long as your army's kind of intact, uh, they're stronger when together, so yeah, they're going to be able to stronger win together. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing to have at this time. Um, but yeah, they're going to be able to tank for each other and uh, get the job done. So nice job to Sub-Zero. Good way to start off the uh, the video. And uh, look at how many troops he has left up if you do this right. N not even all the troops stayed inside the base, but like I said, that's fine. As long as they get into the core, take that out. They can kind of go on a weird path after that because um, you'll have so many troops left up. It won't even matter at that point. So we'll take a look at an example now um, of a attack that wasn't quite as uh, well executed and because of that did not get the three star so let's go up to 24 by the way this war is against the dark knights um, it's just a random matchup I think I mean it's the middle of the week yeah pretty much the middle of the week so I assume it's a random matchup I honestly haven't been in cl on clash that long but um, from from what I know, it is a random matchup with a very good clan, so that's you know going to have some nice attacks leading into the CWL matchup this weekend. So just a, a number of days of awesome attacks to pick from, as well as defensive videos, all, all that good stuff to show to you guys. Uh, so this should be a very productive week and uh, leading into the weekend. But anyway, the next attack is done by Nate. Uh, lower level heroes, but I don't want to make it look like that's what caused this. Um, if the queen was higher level, he wouldn't have not he wouldn't have had to use the ability. Uh, so it was kind of unfortunate he had to use the rage and the ability there when really, you know, the ability itself probably would have been fine because it's down to only one point defense honor at the moment. Uh, but it is what it is. I don't think that all, that cost him the attack either. Um, it's a little bit... I, I don't want to say you can't do it, but when you do a queen charge separate from the attack, sometimes it doesn't go the best. And let me kind of explain that. Basically... 
that's four healers that can only heal the queen. And, uh, you know, that's fine. If she's going to get good value, so be it. But especially when Nate has a lower level queen, he wants those healers on the, you know, the more important troops, which are the Pekkas, the Valks, the Bowlers, the King, that big wad of troops. He only has two healers that are actually going to enter the base uh, with his main kill squad. Because of that, it's, you know, much weaker. Plus, doesn't have the queen backing them up, taking out buildings. All he has for range is uh, a few, the Bowlers and like one or two Wizards. Uh, so right there, everything's moving in. The healer are going to go down fairly quickly though uh, so that's definitely going to hurt and uh, the, everything's in the base for the most part I mean just a bowler went to the outside but that's no big deal uh, things to, you know keep moving through but you'll just see here both healers are down and uh, this guy had a pretty well placed Tesla farm we're seeing that so much so often now is people putting their Tesla farms uh, kind of on the outside of the base by storages and stuff that is a good way to defend against this I mean if this is done right, it's very difficult to defend at all, but uh, this is one of the ways you can try to do so. And you'll see his troops went to the outside, which, like I said, wouldn't be an issue, but you have uh, buildings like this Expo, this Cannon, even, I guess you could say that... Um, bomb tower that um you know he his troops can't reach it from the outside uh, in addition you know there's just so much point defense in that one area they take out his pekkas real quickly uh, the queen is going to be up for a while longer but really um you know she she didn't get the value that really he invested as far as the troop space and the spell space goes. Would it have been better off keeping her outside the base and letting her meet up with the kill squad? That's typically how you want to do it. You don't see many queen charges with this strategy. Um, at least I haven't seen it. It could work, but didn't work out here. And I think that's kind of part of the reason is you, you sometimes just want to do a queen walk that leads into the actual kill squad just to help create the final take out some buildings. Like I said, it's no real uh, investment for you because you're bringing those healers anyway for your main uh, force entering into the base. So one more attack here on I think one of their top Town Hall 9 bases, uh, you know, Max Town Hall 9. So very nice attack here. Comes in with the queen at the bottom, has the healers on her. Just going to take out the CC troops. A lot of offset clan castles actually um, for Dark Knights. And look at that, drop down those two rages, I think by accident, because I don't think he needed the first one. Well, I guess here come the CC troops. Um, so I guess that first rage will probably keep her up long enough, unless he has to pop the ability too. No, it looks like um, he does get value for one of those rages, but the other one was accidentally dropped, which just goes to show the power of this strategy. He's essentially getting the job done with three spells. Um, that next rage wasn't even good placement either. He, you don't want to like drop the rages too early. That's one of the, th the things people do, um, which is a mistake in my opinion, because you're getting full value for those rages anyway because the healers, um, as they move into it, as your main group of troops move past it, the healers step up into the rage. So it's not like you're not getting any value on the back end. Uh, don't drop those too early like uh, I think um, Shayna would, uh, whatever is doing. Um, that's not going to get the most value. Uh, but basically, you'll see his troops kind of made their way through the middle of the base, took it out. Um, similar to the last attack, the queen is kind of on her own, but you can see the troops kind of made their way through the center of the base because of that it's really just a few point defense along the outside and most of it the queen's going to deal with uh, so that works out very nicely you can see there is i guess an element to, of luck to this attack that's definitely you know for sure part of it but if you can find a base where um, the core is very susceptible to just rushing through, the pathing is fairly predictable to the point where you don't have to bring a jump, but you can say, yeah, my troops will take out the expos, um, the important defenses in the center uh, where all the defenses are grouped up, be able to take that out at least. And, you know, who cares where they go after that? Um, it's just a ring around the base of the at the outside of just a few point defense usually. So that's part of it. You know, you got to identify the base correctly, and uh, it's something you just kind of learn through time it's hard to explain in a video but like I said a base where you can kind of say yeah my troops can reliably path their way through um it's never a, ma a matter of oh there's too much damage in the middle of this base because there's so much dps in these bowlers these valks the pekkas um there's so much damage there with your heroes too and the rages that it's a matter of pathing really and that's what you should look for uh, when you're playing this attack can I path my troops to the middle of the base um stuff like that uh, but yeah, that's basically it, guys. You saw the phases of the attack. You typically do a queen walk to start and uh, have her meet up with your kill squad. Make sure the funnel's good. Just have them enter the base. Drop down those rages. Let the, your troops go through it and the healers get the effect of it. Um, 
kind of the aftermath of that and it you know should work out so hope this video helps uh, I did my best to explain it in kind of a shorter type video uh, than usual for these attack strategies so let me know what you think in the comments any questions or anything like that and uh, I'll be sure to take a look at those so thanks for watching I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow uh, get another video out but a little bit busy because it's you know this month and the next not in the next month November December then by the time the new year rolls around I should be back to kind of not having too much going on but just so busy right now anyway I will let you guys go thanks for watching I'll see you later bye set the Tron out